Well, hello, lovely humans. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we are going to be talking about these gorgeous, gorgeous pieces of artwork, if I do say so myself, that I was able to get completed for my sister's little home makeover that we did recently. Uh, but I wanted to specifically highlight these because when I tell you how stupid cheap these are, stupid. And one of my bones to pick with like artwork, <laughs> can I have a bone to pick with like art or wall decorations? is some walls need really, really big pieces to make sense. And it absolutely does not work to do a mishmash of a bunch of smaller things. Like sometimes you just need a good piece of artwork to fill in a giant wall space. And that's what we were able to do for less than $20 a piece. Have you seen this artwork? It's ginormous. So here's what we're gonna do. Today I'm gonna do a little bitty breakdown of how we put them together and teach you how you can do it yourself. Whether or not you have these tools or a handy husband like I happen to have, don't worry. I got you. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. All right, start for the unveiling. I'm a little nervous about this. I uh, wanted to order this as a piece of artwork, but nothing would get here in time. No, you may not have a bag, baby. So I'm just hoping it's not really grainy. Oh, good. Huh. Okay. <laughs> so far, details look great. <laughs> Baby's already chewing on it. Details look great. All right. Can you tell what it is? Can you tell what it is? All right, I should probably steam this. Oh, it's so cute. In case you missed it, last week's video was the revealing of my sister's little home makeover that we ended up doing. She is a single mama for just moved out to Texas, was finally able to move near us. And we're so thrilled to have her and the kids nearby and just be able to love on them and surround them and bless them with something like this. Now her style is kind of like a farmhouse and boho had a baby. So while I personally probably wouldn't put a cow print on my wall, it's just not my vibe. This is literally perfect for her theme. And this is not an uncommon piece of art to see places. But when I tell you the cost comparison between this and getting the actual artwork pre-done is astronomical, absolutely astronomical. Here's the art currently. It's still some creases from being shipped over. I am just still in shock by how huge this is. <laughs> um, but I know once it's on the frame, fully stretched out, creases will ideally, I think they'll go away. I'm not to worry about it. We can also steam it again um, later on, but I don't want to iron it because I'm 98% positive this is polyester and it'll just melt. But we are putting, oh, he's <laughs> smiling at the baby. <laughs> we are putting it on a one by two frame, which is something that we actually did for our wedding, huh? We, I think we did two buys for our wedding. Two by two? Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're gonna kind of create our own, and by we, I mean, I had the vision. <laughs> You're doing all the work. <laughs> she, <laughs> she's trying to grab the camera to pull this taut over and then uh, staple it into place. It's just such a cheap way of doing art. The biggest issue is going to be building out the frame, um, which shouldn't be that complicated. Famous last words, right? No, genuinely, this was a really uncomplicated build. While I did have my husband do this, it was simply because I waited until the last minute to crunch all of my DIYs together, so I had to put it off. And if you're new around here, he's relatively handy. So in a situation like this, you can bet your bottom dollar I will be using him to get this done. And because we're working with such small pieces of wood, there is concern of the wood splitting if you go straight for a screw. So if you have the availability to pre-drill it, we highly recommend doing so, otherwise you could end up cracking the wood. Would it still be functional? Yeah, maybe, depending on the crack. But uh, if you have the skills and the time, pre-drill first. While the tapestry itself came in at about 51 inches by 59 inches, I knew we were gonna sacrifice some of that width and height to be able to wrap around the wood frame that we were creating. So I think we ended up taking off four inches. So I would have an inch and a half, if not two inches of play horizontally and vertically on all sides of the artwork. So instead of 51 inches tall, we went with 47 inches tall for the frame. And instead of 59 inches wide, we went for 55. Now for this DIY, you will probably need at least a drill and some screws. But if you wanna keep things easier, you can have a place like Home Depot cut the wood for you. So you don't need to be making these cuts on your own. And because of the sheer size of this piece, I think it was 51 inches by 59 inches, we definitely needed a center support. So it kind of wouldn't torque on itself. Otherwise it would look like it was warping off the wall. So we needed that center piece. Obviously, depending on the size of yours, you might not need it. But if you do go for a larger piece, this is highly recommended. Now this is something I didn't consider, but what ended up being a saving grace with this piece is that it was not 
clean lined at all whatsoever. You couldn't really see a super specific line on the horizon. The cow on the front isn't super level. So if you're going to replicate this yourself, I would encourage you to not use anything that has clean lines. Because with this, as I'm stretching and stapling all the way around, you can't really tell if the image warps a whole lot. But with those that would have clean lines, whether horizontal or vertical, I'm sure it would show a lot more. Instead of fully stapling one side at once, I ended up kind of doing a little bit all the way around to get my image stabilized and then went back in and started adding more staples. I am definitely going to show in real time what I did with the corners um, just so you guys can have a very clear picture. In this particular instance, I folded the top part down. I'm literally using hand motions as if you can see me right now um, and then folded the side back over it. So it ended up kind of, is that like a... What is that? A hospital tuck for bed sheets? I don't know. It just created a really clean corner. I have another corner that I did that didn't end up looking as clean and I kind of had to finesse it a little bit. But in the end, having a little bit of ruching, you can barely tell from the front. Not get over the scale of this artwork. First of all, let's address the elephant in the room. You may not see this well on camera, but I can totally see the frame. <laughs> I mean, it's subtle enough that I, my hope is that with a white uh, wall behind it or a very mild color wall behind it, it won't be as dramatic. We've got a dark cabinet behind this. I think you're still going to see it. I don't know if I read this in a, a blog somewhere or if I just thought of this, but my thought was to like put a drop cloth behind this because this is a very thin tapestry so you wouldn't see the frame as much uh, but we opted not to because we didn't think it would affect it that much <laughs> but it still is so charming um, and that's just a one by two with a handful of screws I think my husband used a touch of wood glue but for an inexpensive piece of art this especially with like no clean lines this was a very forgiving tapestry to work with, right? Like nothing can show if I pulled a little too wrong in one direction. And if for any reason the scale was difficult to tell, please enjoy my modeling skills, all five foot nine of me, to show you the sheer grandiosenessness of this piece. I saw at Goodwill and absolutely tripped over myself practically to go snatch it up. I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I knew I wanted to do something. My initial thought was joint compound. And then I got a little scared. And then I thought maybe I'll put fabric over it. And then I realized, no, that sounds awful. And then return back to joint compound. And in case you missed it, joint compound artwork is all the rage. But people are doing like the archy thing with it, you know, where they like drag tuning forks through it and create arches. Uh, and while that style works for some people, not the vibe for this particular location, but I still wanted to take advantage of the fact that this is joint compound and not have a completely smooth surface, which baffled my husband to no end because he's like, wait, you want me to not smooth it out? I'm like, yeah, give me some ridges, leave me some texture. Now, earlier you saw him mixing the stuff. There are two types of joint compound that you work with. There is the kind that is already pre-mixed for you in a tub, and there's the kind that you can mix yourselves. We have the kind you can mix yourself. So obviously I'm not going to go out and spend money on something we already own. Then while it's going to take a little bit more time, it's going to give you a lot more control over the results of what the compound looks like when you're working with it. So I loved going this avenue. I'm not quite sure if the pre-made stuff would do the same exact thing. But in a situation like this, do what works best for you in your space. Obviously, you don't want to be buying a giant container of powdered joint compound if you're never going to use it for anything else. So 
Don't overbuy, buy exactly what you need. So unless you see a need for it in the future, I would probably recommend going with a pre-mixed option. allowing this to dry overnight, this is where the fun part happens. I'm obsessed with my tracer. I have used this for so many DIYs, I can't even count them on my fingers and toes. And I can, I promise I can count that high. I just have used this so many times. It is literally like, y'all remember those projectors in school where they had like the glass and it would project what the teacher was writing up on the wall or whatever. Um, and if you don't remember that, good Lord, I'm old. This is the same exact concept. So I sometimes like to look at it in a different setting to make sure I still like the layout. I'm wondering if it's too far in the bottom corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it up here. See if we can get it up a little bit higher. See what I mean? Yeah. Is the, it is level with the frame. I've been staring at it for too long. Or should I say level enough? Yeah, I think it's level. What makes this a more polished DIY though is the font. If you are going to do any sort of font on your walls or on a DIY, go the extra mile to spend your time looking for the right script. Spend your time looking for the right serif, the right sans serif. Your type font alone will make this stand out from something you buy at the store. So for this one, I went with Assistant for the sans serif font and then East Liberty Signature for the uh, scripty font, which is actually part of our branding that we use for um, the Union and the Union Mastermind, which is one of my podcasts. But that's a story for another time. Now, because I've done this so many times, I've done two different options. One, you can outline it in pencil and then go back in and paint it afterwards. Or two, just keep the tracer in the same exact place, do not move it, and paint while it is projecting up onto wherever you are uh, tracing on. This will never be, nor was it intended to be, precision style work. I knew and wanted it to have a hand painted feel. Additionally, it is pretty hard to get those crisp edges. As you can see here, the ends of the shadows are just a little bit fuzzy. So if you wanted to make sure everything was super precise, I would suggest hand drawing in the edges and then following with paint afterwards as it will give you cleaner lines in general. Again, not the look we were going for here, but if you want to make that tweak, you can. And here's another one of those moments where people are like, well, yeah, you can call it a $20 piece of art because you spent $10.99 on the cork board and then you already had the joint compound and a very expensive tracer on hand. Yeah, listen, this thing's like 40 plus bucks. It might be closer to 50. I don't know. I will go ahead and link it in the description box down below if you want to take a look at it. But if you did not want to purchase this, you could do any sort of print and trace method using regular printer paper. So that's where you shade the back side of the paper and then trace over the lettering on the front side with it pressed up, with it pressed up against the artwork to uh, transfer that design over. So while I think the tracer is worth every single penny, if you want to avoid purchasing that, there you go. I'm telling you guys, I love the tapestry artwork so much that I bought two more tapestries. I am planning on repeating that over and over and over again until I'm blue in the face, okay? It is like my favorite hack to end all hacks. I really do love that it is well signed. Um, I think there's something really special about it and really personal um, for my sister and for her journey. And I think it's a really fresh take on putting words on the wall because if I see one more live, laugh, love, I'm gonna live, laugh, lose my stomach contents. I'm just over it, okay? Maybe it's just me, but I can't take it. No more, okay? If we're gonna put words on walls, let's make it personal, let's make it meaningful. And let's not make it cheesy, okay? Thank you. So that's what we have for this week's video, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm going to be very self-aggrandizing and say, which was your favorite? Let me know in the comments down below. Which one would you replicate? Uh, I Obviously, you can tell which one I'm going to do. The tapestry is galore, baby. It's going to look like an art museum threw up in here, okay? Especially because landscapes are like all the rage right now. Oh, I can't wait to show you. The ones that I have probably will show them in an upcoming vlog or whatever. Uh, I adore you. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, for those who donated to my sister's home makeover, we super, super appreciate it. Um, and I can't wait to show you what we do next in this space. I'm just excited to be decorating again. I feel like it went through like a dark period where like we just weren't, we weren't decorating and now we're back and now we're thriving and I'm super excited. So if you like decorating on a budget, but still making it not look like it's on a budget, jump on down there, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. Bye.